All right, so I'm Chris. That's Chris. Pretty easy to figure out, right? Uh, so we're both tech reps for uh, Shimano. So I'm based out of Boston. I do the New England region, so New Hampshire, New York, Connecticut, Vermont, Rhode Island, and Maine. New Hampshire, and all those states up there. And then Chris does what states again? New York, New Jersey, through to Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so um, I'm going to kind of ask a couple questions first because it's kind of a good litmus test and gauge on how I uh, start my presentations. But so who here, again, works at a shop or at all? So a couple of you guys. That's pretty sweet. Um, all right, so uh, how many of you guys have seen, or just in general in the audience, how many people have seen 12-speed uh, road Shimano components in the wild? <laughs> you too. <laughs> Okay, cool. All right. Not at shops or anything like that? All right, cool. Um, how many people ride one or have worked on one? Awesome. Sick. Sick. If you don't, that's cool. Um, I kind of answer questions a little untraditionally. Uh, if you have a question, raise your hand and shout it out. And then if it will derail us, I'll say we'll hold off on that. So, uh, so who here road, rides road bikes? Sick. Sick, right on, cool, awesome, awesome. All right, so, um, <clears throat> like I said, I'm Chris. Uh, we have about 400 slides we need to get through, so we have a lunch later. That's my icebreaker. It means to me it's my go time. Sorry, have to do it every presentation. Um, so we're here to talk about 12-speed uh, road Shimano groups. So it's a partially wireless system. Uh, so for the first time ever, when we launched Shimano 12-speed road groups, we didn't just launch it with a flagship group, Durace. We also launched Altegra at the same time. So we've never done anything like that before. Uh, and then, not so long ago, we released 105. So that's actually that bike that I have out there. Um, we can bring it in later. We can play with it. I'm a little organic with how I do my presentations. So uh, what we've done is first time we've ever done a 105 electronic group. Um, we've done electronic drivetrains for 14 years now? Yeah, 14 years. Uh, and 105 is pretty substantial for a lot of people. Uh, it's the kind of technologies, you know, Shimano's the king of trickle-down technologies. Anybody can hear me too, by the way? We're not, yeah, I'm obnoxiously loud, unfortunately, so my wife hates it. Uh, so it's the first time ever we've done 105. Uh, we're really good at trickling down technology, so how I've kind of worded and done this presentation is we're going to kind of go, I'd say component by, by component, not in a boring way. And you're actually going to hear me say the term, it has a lot of the same things, because there's a lot of technology that goes from Durace all the way down to 105. So Durace being the flagship, Altegra being the tried and true moneymaker, keep the lights on, amazing group set that always gets refined. And then 105 is my favorite group set ever, because I'm a 105 guy. I'm a crusty mechanic. I'm cheap. like to call these the family photos. <coughs> so. Uh, the drivetrain for 105, you know, crank set, front derailleur, rear derailleur, hydraulic disc brakes. So uh, the 105 group and the Altegra groups are going to be disc specific bikes um, on the DI2 side of things. And then uh, Dura Ace is the group set that has a rim brake version. So DI2 is not new technology to us. Digital, anybody know what DI2 means? Anybody? Chris, what does it mean? Digital. It's in, in, in a, I don't think it's integration. Not idiocy. It's not integration. It's I was digital knew it. intel. So um, we've done DI2 for 11 speed drivetrains and 10 speed drivetrains. And every generation, every, obviously, or I shouldn't say obviously, but it should be obvious that anybody that makes electronics should get better with every generation. Uh, so with 11 speed drivetrains, we were the flagship for shift speed uh, and uh, shift movement. So how crisp that adjustment was. Uh, with the 12-speed road stuff, it, it's the reason it's DI2 is it's digital integrated intelligence. Yes, DI squared, some people call it. Um, so the drivetrain itself is actually uh, the new 12-speed stuff. I don't like talking in percentages. It's kind of marketing buzzy, and I'm not like that. I'm a mechanic. Uh, so I just say it's a whole heck of a lot faster. How much faster? About 50% faster. So it's already the fastest drivetrain road drivetrain and road drivetrain on the market, uh, and we've made it 50% faster. 
Part of that is because of the motors, uh, and then another part of it is also because of uh, how the chain and the cassette work, and we can talk about that more in a little bit. So how the drivetrain is made up, kind of the roadmap of the group, is you have the back half of the group and the front half of the group. Uh, the wireless communication happens from the shifters to the rear derailleur. Think of that rear derailleur as the quarterback, and that shifter is your receiver, and then the front derailleur is just kind of there. Uh, because it doesn't have any communication uh, skills anymore. The old one did uh, when it was all fully wired. Uh, anybody have an idea why we are doing a uh, partially wireless system? Makes cockpit setups easier. Uh, it does, um, but that wasn't really the primary focus. In relation to a totally wireless system, is a question. Uh, just why? Why would we do it? Why would we do a partially wireless system? Stability in the system. So stability in shift life, and stability in, uh, stabi stability in shift speed, and stability in the battery life. Uh, so with one battery, you get about 600 miles worth of shifting. Um, and then uh, on the shifters themselves, they're coin-op batteries. So they actually live uh, underneath the hood right here. So we can pass this around if you all feel comfortable with it. And then just make sure my man Chris over there gets it. Please don't squeeze the levers. There's fluid in it. If you get, squeeze the lever, you'll figure out why. Um, do we talk about the wired connection battery? So I hadn't gotten there yet. Okay. So um, this is the meat and potatoes for most people. They ask, how long does the battery last and what batteries are there? So the battery is a battery that looks similar to our current DI2 battery. It's an internal, it's a round battery. Some people call it the internal battery. Uh, and it's wired to the front and rear derailleur. The shifters have coin-op batteries in the tops of them. Uh, it's a 1632 battery, if anybody knows what those are. Those are the ones you get for like your hearing aids or uh, cat eye computers, if anybody remembers those things. Um, you can go to your CVS or Wawa or Walgreens and pick them up, no problem anywhere. Uh, so about 1,000 kilometers to a charge, 600 miles. Uh, and then we say a shelf life of a year and a half to two years on the battery uh, for the uh, shifters. Main reason we call it like a, a shelf life is because different, not all batteries are created equal, right? You got cheapies, you got nice ones, you got your battery plus ones. Uh, if I'm talking too fast, somebody just told me to slow down. Wayne, you got that? Cool, bud. I'm sorry, I'm speaking white. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Uh, there's a couple little differences with 105 that we'll talk about. Uh, but so you get a wired system, and what you can do with that wired system, if you want to grab me the battery out of there. Uh, the batteries themselves actually have three plugs in them. Which one? This guy? It doesn't matter. Okay. And the reason why it's got three plugs in it, so you can do rear derailleur, front derailleur. Why do you think you got a third plug in there? Charging. Nope. Post. Pardon? Post. Nope. Shifters. Shifters. So you can actually wire Ultegra and Dura-A systems so it would be fully wired. Why would you want to do that? It doubles your battery life. So an account, a shop that I deal with had a customer that was on the fence about wireless technology. He's big in the carburetors and records. Um, and he was really concerned about uh, battery life and stagnant issues and all that stuff. And three wires, one to each shifter, one to the uh, battery, doubled his battery life, and he had a solid wired system. The other benefit to that is something that uh, has kind of happened by accident on how we do our electronics and the pro teams like it very much. They can run a completely wired bike, but if that bike was ever paired wirelessly together and they lose a shifter wire because somebody drops their shifter or the wire in the head tube that goes to the battery gets all messed up, it automatically defaults to the wireless signal as and long I, as your batteries are good and your shift levers. I don't think it even has to be paired wirelessly. Like if you default, it's previously plug it previously has to. I think. Really? Even if you plug it in? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't think so. They changed it. Yeah, yeah they changed it. Because when you plug it in, you shift it. Yeah, it's it all the done. Johnny. Yep. 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 Oh, can you back up a second on the third wire? So the third wire would go to the battery. Third wire would go this way. To which shifter? Either, both. Bo both of them, but you okay. would, yeah. You'd basically have a little connector. Okay. And One, it's actually the two. only way you can build the rim brake group. Not that anybody's ordering it, but the rim brake group, the hoods are E-tube, so you have to go E-tube wires to the no, AD305. The, no, they're SD300s. Oh, they are? Yeah, yeah. so, so it's all 300 Oh, the AD305s for TT. Yep. We'll show that. Yep. So yeah, the rim brake group, Wayne? What's the difference between the old battery and the new battery? I was just about to say that a minute ago. 
but great question. Uh, where is that battery floating around? Cool, awesome. So the old battery looks identical, uh, but it's got one plug in it. Did that answer your question, Wayne? The other difference is, is also the firmware inside of it, right? So like everyone's got little flash drives sticking around, right? But they all have different size information inside of it, you know? Um, it's a similar idea. Like the, the old battery cannot do what the new battery does because there's more advanced firmware and stuff on it. Qu the do I have a question? It, it, doesn't use a different wire. it also it does. does happenstance use a different wire. So the new group does use a different wire than the previous group. And the reason for that was not really like a planned obsolescence thing. Uh, it just happens that these new wires are a whole lot smaller. So frame manufacturers and people can cheat these things in a little better position. So, oh, and if you get a wire from us out of the box, it comes with these little detanglers. Anybody have an idea? Or tanglers. Anybody have an idea what those do? Keeps it from rattling? Yeah. Yeah. I have a more basic question. The DIT, the DI2 runs in which group sets? Dura for road groups, it's Dura-Ace, Ultegra, down to 105. Wired and wireless. Dura-Ace and Altegra in and rim brake only. And rim brake only. For, for wired. For wired. Yep. Okay, thank you. What are these things again? They're, they're just a little, uh, anecdotally, they're just little pieces to keep the wire from rattling in the frames. Like inside of a Because it'll stiffen itself up against something. So earlier I talked about that rear derailleur um, kind of being the quarterback. It does everything now for the group set. So on the previous versions of uh, electronic shifting from Shimano, we had a charger, a wireless unit that kind of connects to your phones and other devices, and then you had a junction box that had a button on it, your LEDs, kind of took care of all that stuff for adjustments. Um, it was where all the information was sent and received to. Now all of that's done on the rear derailleur itself. Um, so this was a massive uh, massive change for us, and it's also probably the most radically changed part for the drivetrain itself. Uh, you actually have a charge door on the back of it. it. does have a wire that goes to it. It is not a big wired charging block. It's actually just a wire. By the way, anybody notice that our packaging's changed? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm pretty stoked on it. It's yeah, now all it. recyclable, so we're not using anything inked, and we're using bags finally. I'm really stoked on that. Same bags you get at your donut That's shop. It. So the wire is just the wire now, which is great. It's got a USB plug. No, we don't put the 12 pronger or the two pronger in it. Uh, and it only snaps in in one direction, so it's keyed out. Kind of so like how you see right there on the screen. Mentioned it. I don't think he didn't mention it, but the middle the plug always has to be plugged in. So if you're going to build one of these up, read or read. On the road side of it is still the traditional spring styling to it. This middle plug has yep. to be plugged in. Good question. I see another hand up somewhere. To the middle plug. Uh, I hadn't talked about that yet. So you have your LED light on the top of the derailleur. You got a little button underneath the derailleur. That LED light flashes different colors. Uh, and those different colors are red and green for your battery life. Uh, and then blue is sending a Bluetooth signal to either a phone to do adjustment no, or uh, okay. to other devices oh, on your phones or your shifters. And there's like no, a weird sure. yellowy, greeny color that uh, actually uh, is your adjustment mode. So you can physically adjust the derailleurs, kind of like a barrel adjuster. Charge is right there, trap door. Anybody see the trap door for the charger yet? First time I showed this group to a uh, manufacturer, I didn't, like I, I got the kit like super early. Uh, Chris and I actually got race stock stolen from pro teams. It was pretty sick. Um, and I didn't know the door was actually, in all the photos we saw, it looked different. So when we got it, I was like, oh, crap, they didn't put the door on correctly. And it's right there. It's pretty slick. And it's a part that we have in stock in case you break it or has it, have it come off. Uh, and these charge cords are similar for all three groups and also for the power meter. So if you have a bike, you only need to travel if you have a power meter and the bike, you'll need to travel with one charge cord. And if the bike's not charging, it's because it doesn't say Shimano right side up. Like 
always right side up. It's keyed a specific way. Yeah, that I've already gotten a few calls. So I do this presentation with a lot of shops and I had a, a prize for the first shop that got a customer that called saying their charger didn't work because they were putting it in the wrong direction. So it's actually physically keyed so you can't put it in the wrong direction. Uh, so I talked about three ports on that shifter. That third port, that one that's kind of floating in space right there, is actually the reset port. And the reason for that is any electronics, anybody here has called somebody, they say, the first thing that manufacturer always says to you is, did you try turning it off, unplugging it, waiting 90 seconds and plugging back in and turning it on? Ours, it actually does something. A lot of other times it doesn't, but it's, a, it's a, kind of like a reset. Uh, with the old battery, it had one wire, so it knew you unplug that wire, it would go into a reset mode. Not like reset, you're, you know, you're dead, but reset as in uh, it would restore itself if it's unplugged for 90 seconds. Well, with three ports, it doesn't know which one it is, so that third port right here is that reset port. It also has a spring inside it, that's how it knows it, uh, and if there's nothing plugged into that port, whether it's a little head cover that you see, like a little plug, or the wire, it will rapidly drain the battery. Engineers do not like using the term rapidly. They never use the term rapidly, and they said rapidly drain the battery. So it'll drain really freaking quick. A couple hours, who knows? I haven't tried it yet. Can you fly with the battery if you pack your bike up or like in a plane? Yeah, yeah, totally. Enough. We do all the time. Um, not an e-bike though. Not a, well, yeah, because it all depends on the size of the battery. That's the biggest thing. It's like uh, how big the battery is in space, not like physical, but like how much it does. But like with the batteries on these bikes, yeah, no problem. You don't no even problem. have to move it. Just throw it yeah. in the case. And just like uh, your, it's no different than your um, phone. phone or like a battery backup pack or anything like that. So the ergonomics of the bike, every year they get a bit better. Um, who here has seen the short reach levers that Shimano did from the previous generation? Anybody seen those before? So short reach lever was the reach of the lever was a little farther in, had a little bit of a curve, and it was actually swept out a little bit. So if you had different sized fingers or uh, your hands were a little too small, or not too small, but a little smaller, or if you just liked that feel of the lever, uh, we actually kind of did it in that generation, the previous generation of Dura-Ace and Altegra to experiment on how people liked it and they loved it. So we've actually taken a lot of that similar hand feel and put it into the lever itself. Um, the digiting gets better. It doesn't feel like a mouse from Staples for $5 from 20 years ago. You know, very dull feeling, not a lot of tactical feel to it. Uh, we spend, I think, the most time in design and testing on shifter button feel and where it travels in space than anything else. Uh, the flat bar DIT mountain levers we did a couple years ago, uh, they were in <laughs> development for like eight years or something like that. Six figure different out. designs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When is the mountain coming we're always working on new product for the uh, enjoyment of consumers and users and disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. So Same yeah, ergos. Toss them around if you want. Right. Are you going to talk about the customization of these buttons? Uh, yeah, we'll get a bit into it. We'll get a little bit into it. Yeah. Yep. Great question. So uh, for the fitters in the room or the people that are worried about fit, there's no difference if you were to put this group onto an existing bike that you have. You don't have to worry about changing out your bars or stems or anything. Where your hands are in space is the same. You just have more real estate in the levers for more fingers or gloves and whatnot. So kind of talk about Durace and Altegra. You have the ability to um, have a year and a half battery life, has a little, braking, a little better braking system inside the levers themselves called Servo Wave. It's a, we can get into it later, but it effectively changes how quick the pistons move when you squeeze the levers. Uh, so we've adopted it from the mountain side and we put it in on the mountain, uh, from the mountain side, we put it on the road side. Made a huge difference. A little more clearance. Yeah, a little more pad clearance too in the caliper. It allots for about 10% more pad clearance. Makes it cooler. It changes the ratio, right? It starts a little slower and then progressively gets a little harder. Man knows his stuff. A little bit, yeah. 
Uh, it cha what, not harder, what it does is it changes that piston speed. The primary focus of it is it changes that piston speed, so the cl it starts out slower and then ramps up the piston speed towards the end of the stroke. So the initial pull of the lever before you enter the servo wave track is just getting the pistons to the rotor, closing that excessive gap. And then once you get into the track, the leverage is now all for modulation. So it, it, it changes from speed to power. Uh, the other thing about the levers I didn't really talk about too, too much uh, is you actually have an LED on the front of the lever. And what that LED do does is it uh, tells you what the battery life is. Uh, but in my opinion, it's useless. So you hold down both buttons for a second, and it lights up green. <sighs> my battery's charged. And then it tells you its battery's charged because it has two lights, green and red. Green light goes from 100% down to 10%. So it's not really, not really useful. Well, if you had 10% left, how far could you go? We, 60 hours. Well, it's, so it all, so the really bad answer, but is truly the answer, is depends on the quality of the battery that you have. So that's the reason why it's such a vague, like if you read our dealer manuals, why it's such a broad number is because it depends on this, what quality of the battery is. But it so, could be five hours, which is a decent Well, it all, it's all a matter of clicks. Are your tools swap it out so you get a couple of it's just they literally, it's literally pull the cover back. It's a screwdriver. Yeah, That's it. Just make sure you yep. don't drop the screw. Um, if you want to put the really high quality batteries or stock really high quality batteries in your shop, the Renata brand from Switzerland is amazing. It's what all the top watch makers use. Yep. It's a very good brand, but still they have a shelf life in the drawer. So what we the say, again, sorry, Renata. Yeah, that's just the battery and the shifter. All that's doing is telling you what the battery life is for the shifter. Right. Yep. So um, like if you deliver a bike and we say a year and a half on those batteries, it's been sitting on your floor, you know, you don't know when it was assembled. I always just tell shops to tell the consumer, you know, bring this back every year. So even if they do blow past their service interval, the bike still works. The beautiful part about our job as tech reps is there are certain things that marketing has to say, and then we get to tell you what is actually true. Um, what we like to tell our shops as well, too, when we're because we primarily work with bike shops, teach them how to work on product, um, get feedback from them and whatnot, and train them on the product. Uh, what I like to been, what I like to tell the shops recently uh, is if you see red, it's just a good indicator that you're going to want to change it. Because again, that it's all about it's not about shelf life per se. I mean, I say it is because the coin op batteries are junk. I mean, not junk, but they're uh, different quality levels, right? Uh, it's all about how many clicks you got. So the previous generation of Di2, if you're down to a certain percentage, it'll actually slow down the front shifting and then turn the front shifting off, almost like a limp mode, and then gives you X amount of shifts in the rear to railer. We would typically say about 60 to 80. I did an entire 100 mile ride with just a rear to railer because I was too not smart to charge the bike and I was too embarrassed to tell anybody, so I did the entire <laughs> ride counting clicks on my rear to railer, um, which is actually really smart because the front derailleur takes up 10 times the amount of uh, battery life to move than the front uh, the rear derailleur does so it slows it down and then it turns it off so but great question on uh, the batteries yeah super easy to take out the benefit to 105 is there's actually on Altegra and Durace the top of the but the top of the hoods actually have a button there so in that button you can use as a shifter, you can use it to scroll screens on your computer. That's what I do with mine. You can use it to turn off and turn on Bluetooth lights. You can program that button to do whatever you want it to do within reason. Um, the 105 levers do not have that ability. It's one of the cost saving techniques that we did. So because of that, we put in stacked coin op batteries because that battery, any coin op battery, you can stack them like a regular Durace or you know, a Duracell or whatever. So it doubles your battery life, which I thought was. Yep. Yeah, we have more real estate because we took that button out of there. Gotcha. Yep. How many does one five come with? And Yep. And that's a stack CR sixteen thirty two. Yep. Totally. Totally. And again, like when we first found out that a couple years ago that we were going to use that battery, I literally, like right after the presentation, went to a bunch of different drugstores. And yeah, like if it's, 
any modern drugstore or grocery store or whatever, that's a, that's a common battery size. And why did we not use the 2032 battery, the larger one that you see in a lot of other projects or products? It's real estate, it's just not enough room to do what we need to do and work around it. So, uh, With the new hydraulics that we have in the levers, so Shimano system is extremely easy, very simplistic. It's the same bleed theory, if you will, from mountain to road and a bunch of other parts. Uh, we've actually made it even easier to bleed and even simpler, which I found it hard to believe, but it is true. It is a little easier. It's easier for air to get out of it, out of that point right there. Uh, it's a pull piston, not a push piston. So mountain levers pushes that piston, road levers pull that piston. Uh, road levers were notoriously, so the first generation of road hydraulic mechanical shifting levers that we made was the single most expensive part that we made. Because think about it, you got to get all the shifty bits and the hydraulic stuff in space that's that big. Let me put it up here. Yep. To... So the old hydraulic line would have to go up 45 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree, and then 120 degree into a reservoir. So it was very easy um, for air to get trapped. So when you take a lot of those mechanical shifting needs and parts out of it, it frees up a lot more space. When we're talking about the shifters, you are able to, with Altegra Endurace, add satellite shifters. Satellite shifters being you could have a pair of shifters on the top of the bars, so you're putting your hands up there, kind of like a hood top style, you know, if you're resting your hands up there, climbing and whatnot, uh, and you can put a, it's individual buttons left, right, or you could put them on the drops if you're sprinting or if you're down there a lot in a more aerodynamic position or just in a different fit position. Uh, you can have those work too. Those are wired and they plug into the shifters directly. 105 does not have that ability. Again, one of the ways to bring it down in price. Um, and there's two part numbers. Think of the S for sprints, the bottoms, and T for tops. And the reason why there's two part numbers, they're different lengths, different length wires. talking about the bat rear derailleur already a bit, but uh, it goes uh, up to one derailleur too, by the way, for all your cassette options for each group set. So 30, 34s, one derailleur. 34, 36, uh, or 30, 34, 36 for the 105 groups, it's one derailleur. That's it. So it makes it a whole lot simpler. And 105 is the only one that sets the 36. Correct. Officially. Officially. Try it, see what happens. <laughs> Ultegra derailleur is very similar. The fit, the function of it is very similar. You're getting the materials different is the primary difference. 105, ooh, question. What is a direct mount rear derailleur? A direct mount rear derailleur is Might be better on, yeah. so, this thing. Yeah. So direct mount That's rear derailleur. Direct mount too. Yeah, on your bike too. Direct mount rear derailleur is... Sorry to throw you off topic. No, you're not, man. We're vibing right now. excited about it. Cool. It's no, 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 no. with it's, mountain bike. So, yeah, we originally started it with mountain bikes. Kind of hard to see because I like all black things. Um, and funny enough, it actually got adopted better on the road and the mountain side of it. So the whole purpose of it is to take out um, kind of direct where it is in space. So it moves the derailleur in and up. Came out with it for mountain bike side of it uh, to deal with debris... Uh, crashing, anything like that. And then on the road side of it, everyone thought it was cool because if you put the term aerodynamics to frame manufacturers, they all go nuts over that stuff. Um, the other thing that's nice about it is it gets it out of the way in space. So are you adding a part, deleting a part? Deleting so this part. You're getting rid of that part. replacing it with the hanger. Yep. So um, now the hanger gets longer. Another thing I really like about the direct mount design is it forces the OEM to put the derailleur hanger exactly in Shimano spec. Because okay. we give them all spec ranges, but not all manufacturers do all the things uh, so in certain ways. A pivoting thing with yep. Yep. Just this little B-link yep. right here. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yep. That's that one does too. Well. That one does not. 
because Seven was still working on The reason on a new we one. went away from in on mountain bike is just there's, there's not enough room with the design with the 51 tooth cassette. We had to go back. Yep. What's the official maximum capacity of the Ultegra wheel derailleur? 34 tooth. 34, okay. Yep. Officially. Officially. I got officially. I got it. Cool. <laughs> uh, and the reason why there's a whole lot of that, I mean, I could really nerd out over frame spec and sizes and whatnot, but I'm not going to because it's super embarrassing for me. Uh, so we're just going to leave it at that. So 105 does a lot of the same things that Ultegra and Dura-Ace does. And you're going to, again, hear me say that a lot. Uh, it still has the wireless technology, same LED, same button, uh, same charging capacity, uh, very similar shift speed as well. So the front derailleur, first time I grabbed one, uh, I thought it was a fake. And we do like little insider information for y'all that aren't in the industry. Uh, a lot of the photos that you see on the internet of bikes when the product first comes out or if they get pre-done pictures, it's their mock-ups, their dummies. Um, so they're not actually working parts, shifters, derailleurs, hydraulics. They're just uh, modeled up parts. Uh, I thought I got a modeled up front derailleur because it's super freaking light. It's really, really light. Um, so a couple of the differences in the front derailleur uh, is we've, able to made it, we've made it smaller and we've made the motor faster like I was saying earlier. Uh, main reason why we wanted to reduce the overall size is because uh, chain stays are getting shorter, tires are getting in the way, aerodynamic <laughs> frames are all the rage in the plastic world. So uh, it allows that derailleur, it allows a little more freedom for the frame manufacturer to put that derailleur on there in the right spot. Also with the front derailleur, you'll notice that there's no limit screws, there's no adjustment screws on the Altegra Endurace. It's done electronically now, uh, completely. We've had it, it's been electronic for part of it for a bunch of years. Now it's fully electronic. Uh, the 105 derailleur still has a, uh, a top limit screw, a high limit screw. Uh, again, to bring the cost down to the group. And it works really well. Our front derailleurs work awesome. If you guys have front derailleurs, uh, they work great. They work really, really well. Uh, with that front derailleur also allows, who here has heard of like synchronized shifting or synchro shift? So it's something that Shimano first came out with where uh, either the rear derailleur dictates where the front derailleur goes or the front derailleur dictates where the rear derailleur goes. So you shift in full synchro and the rear derailleur going up, and this is the front derailleur, you know, highly technical, front derailleur, rear derailleur. You go up in the cassette in the back the front derailleur trims so it gets out of the way of the chain. And then you make a pre-described shift. It shifts up to this cog, moves the, the derailleur, front derailleur to wherever you want it to go, whether it's in the big ring or the little ring. Now the cooler one, in my opinion, is what's called synchro light, where your front derailleur dictates where your rear derailleur goes. So you're in your little ring, and you're about to come up to your biggest uh, climb in the area. What's the name of it? Do you have a climb that you do by your house or on your, one of your rides? Heart Attack Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perry Hill or whatever. You know, you're on the flats, you're in the, you're in the big ring, um, and then you come up to this hill. What, what's the first shift you do when you're about to climb up the hill? Front derailleur to the little ring, right? What's the next shift you do? Two or three cogs. It does it for you. So how I have my bike set up is I typically have my bike set up in semi-synchro, or if I make the front shift, it'll change my front gearing from little ring to big ring two clog, cogs, and then from big ring to little one cog, because I think I'm a hero. So it doesn't do much of a recovery shift. And that's the whole purpose of that light, synchro light is the recovery shift aspect of it. So there's semi-synchro and there's synchro light? Full, uh, so I'm sorry, I'm mixing terms. So like full synchro and semi-synchro. Okay. Yep. Or no that's it. Or no manual mode, yep, manual. And we've had that for uh, about a decade now on the mountain bike and previous generation of road stuff, and now all the road stuff has it as well. So in a lot of the presentations that I like to do, blue means new. So uh, Dura-Ace has never had a 34. They've been asking for it forever. We finally did it. So you all can clap and say thank you. That's all because of me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you have two options for cassettes. 
and three options for chain rings. Anytime we come out with a flagship group like Dura-Ace uh, or XTR for the mountain bike side of it, uh, those typically have the most chain ring options and the most crank arm options. Uh, so you have a 30 and a 34, and then you have the compact, mid-compact, that 5236, and then you have that big Johnny right there, 5440. We're all asking for it. Yeah, so <laughs> the reason why there's that 5440, typically at this point of the presentation, somebody says, oh my God, that's way too big. Why would you have that? That doesn't make any sense. You now have a 30, you now have a 34 in the back. So now you can have the widest double range possible on that bike with the 5040, because it's only one tooth bigger than a standard double. I don't do math that well, I'm a bike mechanic, but 5339 plus one on each, divide the four, carry the three, is a 5440. And the larger OD is slightly less rotational resistance and slightly longer lasting chain. Dynasis, is, essentially. Yeah. On the Altegra, it's a little simpler. You still have the two options in the back, and then you have the two options in the front. And then for 105, you have a 34, 36. Right now, all we have available is the 34, 36 will be coming. And then a 54, 50, uh, 34, 52, 36. Uh, the other thing, too, is let's say you have a customer that wants 105, or you yourself want 105. Uh, and you want uh, that 5440, buy that crank set or those, buy that crank set and put it on and it'll work. So Length. all the drivetrain parts are cross compatible throughout the group sets. Length. Length. 105, what are the lengths? Oh, oh, I'm going to get into that in a second. Oh, okay. Um, so cassettes, that 1130, 1134, 12 speed cassettes. Uh, so a couple neat things about our cassettes, the 12-speed ones specifically, is they're backwards compatible. Again, it's something you can take a 12-speed cassette and put it on an 11-speed wheel. Again, it's for me, thank you. You can all clap for me now. It's all because of me, 100%. 100%. So uh, that was something that a lot of shops were requesting, and it's just something that, in, in general, people are requesting. Uh, how many? If you guys have multiple wheel sets for your bikes. So, and a lot of uh, people are, are married to a specific wheel set. They have invested money into it. They've used it for a long time. And if you want to upgrade your current bike, you don't have to reinvent the wheel to put on a cassette. So the only proprietary cassette is the Dura-Ace one, which what we've done is we've added more splines uh, in the same space. So we just doubled them. And the whole reason why we did that is so you can have a aluminum free hub body for the road wheels so they can be lighter. It was all done for the hub side of it, not the cassette side of it. So what you're saying is if I upgrade the 12 to my current wheel set, I have to use an Altegra cassette yeah, or, with my Dura-Ace. No, 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 no. So, so all 12 speed cassettes fit on 11 speed wheels. Okay. You can't put 11 speed cassettes on the 12 speed specific wheel. Gotcha. Uh, it's got more splines, so I have a slide for it coming up in a minute. Um, but basically, there's 11 splines. You ever anybody taken a cassette off their wheel or looked at the free hub body on their wheel? On a road wheel, there's 11 splines. We've doubled them. We just cut them down the middle. It's like you know, when sometimes you need two chain whips to remove a cassette to back the cogs off after they've dug. The Dura Ace is different than the Ultegra 105. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So the Dura, so the Ultegra 105 wheels are also backwards compatible. The wheels are not the cassette. Yeah. Yeah. The Dura Ace one is. But the 105 and the Altegra cassettes have the same. Yep. Splines. Yep. No. Why isn't it all micro spline? Isn't all no. speed cassettes nope. micro spline? Nope. That's nope. Micro spline is uh, related to road. So, or mountain. I mean, a mountain. Micro spline is related to mountain bikes. It's the same philosophy that we apply to center lock, right? Like, if you think about something that puts way more torque into a hub, it's a brake rotor, right? and you have something that's sitting on a spline interface that doesn't notch. The existing 11-speed free hub body, if we were going to construct that out of a soft aluminum material, it's, that's not satisfactory to Japanese engineers. There you go. So, so that's basically the micro-spline approach to the hub. 
people, a lot of people think it's microspline because the technology is there. Microspline pertains to uh, the 10 tooth cog because that's got to be smaller too. Does that diagram make sense? Does that clarify this question? This is the slide. Like, I always can tell when we do good slides, when people stop and take pictures. There's like four slides that I typically do. This is like usually my most, in the bike shop world, this is my most photographed slide. <laughs> Why don't you walk us through what you just said again, please? So right here, this, slide. this is your 11-speed free hub body, your current one, right? Yep. That's your 12-speed one. What's the difference? The amount Visually. of splines. Yeah. But so is that on all three levels? Only aluminum, only on Dura Ace. Okay. So. so And the cassette for Dura Ace is different too, specifically for Dura Ace. Yeah. Gotcha. The only thing you got to worry about is if you have a Dura Ace hub, then you got to worry about what cassette you're buying. If you have, am I wording that wrong? If no. you have I, a Dura Ace 12 speed hub, then you got to worry about what cassette you have. It just oh. has to be Shimano 12 speed. It just has to be Shimano 12, 12 speed. Yeah. If you got 11 speed, it just has to be Shimano 12. 12 and 11. Yeah. See, so 12-speed cassette, CS is the term that we're our internal structure, but 12-speed free hub body. The only time this would be a deal breaker is if you're buying a replacement wheel for an 11-speed bike and you want to put an 11-speed cassette on a Dura Ace free hub body, it's not going to work. Yep. Everything else works. Any 12-speed cassette will drop onto a Dura Ace 12 uh, free hub body. What or using a non Shimano wheel? 11 speed free hub body. As long as right it's on. the HG 11 speed free hub body. It'll work with the new 12 speed. Yep. Dirt. Yep. Totally. Totally. Is it, is it a place where that new 12 speed free hub body is going to get used because then someone wants a lightweight wheel and they're going to free hub Bingo. body. Bingo. Or just a full Shimano system. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. system integration for that. No, like. I don't think so. I remember when we did, if anybody remembers the 10 speed specific free hub body, it's the first time we ever used a cartridge bearing in a hub. It had extra, extra, it was basically the 11 speed free hub body, only 1.85 millimeters narrower, extra, extra deep splines. So the cassette, it was the same idea, but it still notched it up a little bit. We got to roll DT this up too, that. Yep. Um, so cassettes, they're faster, heavier shifting up the cassette, so harder shifting up the cassette, Hyperglide Plus, so I should say lighter. It's a lighter action going up. And then coming down to cassette, you can actually shift under extreme load. So you don't have to back off the, the um, cassette at all or the pedals. Uh, it's a technology we borrowed from the mountain bike side of it. So you can really stomp on the pedals and shift, which is great. Uh, it's uh, about a third the shift speed of the previous generation of shifting. You had a quick question? Why is the 105 cassette so much shinier than the other two? Because uh, it's a steel cassette versus the titanium and aluminum parts. Great question. Uh, so your crank arm length options, 160 for Dura Ace up to a 177 and a half. Ultegra is 160 to 175. Again, a few shorter on either end. And the 105 is 160 to 175. And all three cassettes are hologram, I mean, uh, 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 holotech cassettes. I mean, uh, uh, cranks, man, I can't talk today. Uh, holotech cranks, so they're a bit lighter. First time we ever did a Holotech or a Hollow 105 crank as well. I'm going to pass this chain around. Just if you take a really quick look at the inner plates, that's what makes it a Hyperglide Plus chain. They protrude past the rollers. And then I'm going to pass around the power meter that we have for, one, uh, for Dura Ace and also Ultegra. It's a two-sided power meter. It plugs in the spindle itself. It's a Bluetooth directly to the rest of the bike and to whatever head unit you use as well. Um, and it tells you, beside your power, your left-right balance and your rotational force as well, which is pretty cool. And the only difference between the Ultegra and Dura Ace is the crank set itself. It's the same accuracy within one and a half percent. It's the same charger. It's the same battery life. So it's up to you on which one you want, which is pretty cool in my opinion. So the power meter technology is identical. Um, also you're noticing that it doesn't have chain rings on it because it's being spec'd to the shops. 
uh, to, through uh, chain ring lists. So if you have an existing crank set with chain rings already on it, you can use those chain rings, uh, the 12 speed ones for Shimano, or you, you can get the right combo that you need. Mm -hmm. Less skews, it makes it easier to ship. Right there. Talked about See that a little go, bit already. The inner plates go past the roller. So the boiled down version of 12 speed is you have a wireless cockpit, which like you were saying earlier, 80% of your time building up a bike, it's based on the cockpit. So if you take that out of it, it's a whole lot faster, a whole lot simpler to build a bike because you're not worrying about wires and down tubes and head tubes and how many buttons I'm putting together. It takes only a couple minutes to put it together. New hydraulic brake platform. Battery, front derailleur, rear derailleur are all integrated together. There is a rim brake option for all six people that want that out there. Zero OEM spec. Zero OEM spec. Probably the first time we've ever produced a group that hasn't been spec'd by an OE. Yeah. You can do rim brake. Like Dura Ace and Ultegra, yes. And it is a wired only group. Not 105. No. It's a wired only group, so my cockpit is still wired. Yes. You get the benefit of the better shifting, you get the benefit of the um, you get the benefit of the better shift shifting, better battery life, more modern drivetrain parts. Uh, it's just still a wired bike, which a lot of those bikes are, you know, spec for wires already. So Nothing you need to retrofit or change on that. Bigger chain ring options for Dura-Ace. And then 105, hydraulic disc brake spec only. No rim brake, no wireless. Wayne? Is it spindle, aluminum, or steel? Steel. Steel? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. And this is the thing that really is important for most shops. This is the other photo that everyone takes pictures of. What stays the same? Chains, same chains that you get for your 12-speed mountain stuff. Rotors, reduced skews, shops like that because it's less pieces that are specific to the group sets. Uh, brake pads are the same, so if you got two bikes, 11-speed bike, 12-speed bike, the brake pads are the same sizes. The hoses, not that many it's people heavy. care about that, but they're the same. It's medium. And then and the cassettes are backwards compatible, which shops like a lot. Any questions on that stuff so far, guys? Uh, well, why did the, the rotors with the really big fins go away? They're still around. Uh, it depends on what you're looking at, though. So um, I'll talk about rotors real quick, and then I'll, after that I'll, we'll get into, since we have a couple extra minutes, about pairing up the group sets. Um, so the rotors, uh, anybody have an idea what that black paint is? Heat dissipating, high temperature heat that you see in like F1 and like NASA uses it. It's pretty rad. Um, that's the only difference between the Altegra and Durace rotors. They are identical, except there's a little black paint on this. It actually makes a big difference. Um, the largest fins that you saw on the road rotors that I don't have anywhere, the old road mm -hmm. rotors, um, worked very well at reducing heat um, to the brake itself. Again, adopt the technology from F1 forcing, or a lot of other uh, industries, forcing air to those calipers to help keep the hydraulic oil uh, low. But they weren't good in itself of staying cool. Uh, so you do get a little bit of rotor run out. They'd move a little bit. If you think about the original Durace rotor design with that extreme uh, finning, it really was just to appease the UCI to get the rotor legal. Again, right? we're getting so a little no, we're no fingers going in there. Embarrassingly diving down the rabbit hole, but great question. Um, so the question everyone says is how the heck do you power the whole group together? So the two ways that you would set it up, we'll kind of glaze over that a little bit. <laughs> um, so there's two ways to do the bike, uh, and by do the bike, pair it all together. So if you have three wires, you have your rear derailleur to the battery, wire to the left shifter, wire to the right shifter, you hold down the button on the rear derailleur for five seconds, it flashes solid blue, flashes blue, green means good, red means not good, do it again. And then you unplug the shifters and you can build the bike. Kind of like a bench setup. If you're getting a kit for somebody ahead of time and you want to pair it all together, you can do that. Or you take out your handy dandy smart device, what I don't have right here, right here. And you download the eTube project app. eTube project is the uh, 
customization and uh, featured technology from all our electronic stuff. So you download eTube, E-T-U-B-E, -E, like it sounds, uh, off of any of the Google app or whatever stores. Hit that button in the middle. Hit a button on the rear derailleur. Tells you that you're connected to a bike, just like you're hooking up a Bluetooth speaker to your phone. It's got to, you got to tell it, hey, it's me. So when you press the button on the rear derailleur, it says, hey, I'm here. And then you see three things. Well, two things. You see a uh, front derailleur and a rear derailleur and a battery. You don't see the shifters yet because it hasn't been paired to those shifters. So you hit add wireless switch. And then you type in that entire code, like your cable box at home, and screw it up 20 times. Or you have your phone, which it automatically does. It opens up the camera on your phone, and it reads that QR code, and it takes less than a second. Me explaining it to you right now took longer to explain than actually to do it. It takes like four seconds. It's super quick. Super, super quick. We got a couple extra minutes. Anybody have any questions on any of that stuff? <laughs> After I just threw it all at you? Can you use the Hyperglide plus chain on lens speed stuff? Nope. No. Okay. Great question. Why can't you? So that chain, think of these as the outer links, these as the inner links. So on any other chain, uh, they have the rollers that sit on either side of it. Again, why do we need those cutouts, man? Um, yeah. And what that chain is now is the inner links are actually, they are moved. This is, again, super embarrassing that we know I know all this, and we'll talk about it. Doubling the holding power. So, exactly. So it moves past the roller. The inside link of the chain moves past the roller. So it doubles the power of it. But then it also helps guide the chain as well on the cassette going up the cassette and down the cassette. What that means is it's pulling the chain. Because when you're going to an easier gear, Shimano's always known for light action shifting very light action is in feel because it's all about feel right when you're driving a car with a six speed or a really old farm truck with a doggy four speed in it same thing with drivetrains when you're shifting up to those easier gears shimano's always prioritize light feel and light digiting of the shifting so going up the cassette was ramped and pinned in that way which was called hyperglide uh, then hyperglide plus has that ramping and pinning going to the easier gears but then also to the harder gears, which is why you can shift under load. Because before, when you tell a shifter in a mechanical sense, you know, you're shifting up with a cable, it moves up, it just kind of the cable pushes or pulls that derailleur up because the shifter is holding it in a direction, kind of like your fishing reel, you had a button on there, right? And then coming down to cassette, it's just releasing cable. Well, the derailleur would just move a little bit, but how it moved is what we changed. Instead of it just coming down really hard and then it's floating and it lands in a clunky gear every single time. So if you're really on the gas, it might miss shift or get really clunky. Anybody ever done that before accidentally? Now that doesn't happen. It changes that time. So it's a third the time to move from one cog to the next. And all this stuff that I'm explaining to you is really hard for you to actually understand unless you ride it and feel it. It only works under load. It won't do it in the stand. In the stand, it shifts like a traditional hyperglide. Yep. What can you tell us about 12-speed GRX? We're always working on new product for the enjoyment of consumers and riders. Disclaimer, 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 disclaimer. Can you talk about installing a chain, both initially on the sh at the shop and then also at home if you're one of these guys who's taking your chain off and giving Do you have three chain? hours? It's a completely new, you know, procedure. So but we have a website foolproof. that's really, really good. Um, you go to Shimano's website, you go to the group set, you click on the part, it'll bring you to um, like a user manual, if you will. Okay. Um, but then you can also get dealer manuals online or instructions on how to cut chains for the different group sets. Um, it's very similar to the mountain side of it. So when we talk to shops, uh, it's instead of six links, big, big, it's three full links. It's not like when I used to say to sport 30 years ago. Nope. Yeah, when you would do your straight up and down. Yeah, nope. nope also, that's really been... quickly, uh, they, uh, everything up until now, um, we've had uh, crash saver mode. 
So if you were to you know, lay the bike down in a crit, your rear derailleur would go dead, it would disconnect from the servo mechanism, and the only way to plug that back in was to a press and hold on A junction. Now if we still have a crash saver or crashable rear derailleurs, but there is no more crash saver mode, you just shift, shift, shift all the way up, and then you'll plug the servo back in, and you're good to go. The reason why we had that crash mode was so if you crash, it would say, hey dummy, don't ruin a $400 derailleur, take a look at it first. 1200 initially. Yeah, actually you're right with the 7970 stuff. Um, it was a way for you to visually, humanly check it. Um, and you would hit the button on that junction box like we're talking about that used to be under the stem or in the handlebar, hold it down for a couple seconds and it would move up and down. Um, now since it's wireless, we don't have to worry about a wire potentially being disconnected in that crash. Uh, so you just shift, like Chris was saying, uh, down and that motor and the servo and the electronical part and mechanical part, electronical, I like that word, uh, mm -hmm. it's got basically like a C bar on it and a snap ring style. So uh, it can be disconnected. I actually got a panicked call from a shop a few weeks ago. Its customer packed his bike up uh, and the derailleur was in the way, so he moved it and it wasn't shifting where he got to his uh, big ride. And the shop said, no, just click the buttons until it goes all the way up, or you think it, just count the clicks up. I usually tell the shops, you know, if it's 11, I usually tell them 15 in case you miss one, right? Uh, just shift up like 15, 20 times and shift down and hopefully it'll work, uh, as in it wasn't too damaged. And it did, it actually did for the guy on the phone, which was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, if your bike isn't working. The other neat thing is the first time you actually shift or press a button on a new DI2 bike, doesn't do anything, which really freaks me out. <laughs> but that's because it's waking up the system. That's how you wake it up. You don't have to take a battery out when you're traveling or anything like that. There's no erg meter on it or accelerometer that tells it that it's moving. Uh, it's just that first initial click. And then I think it stays live for like 20 minutes or something mm -hmm. like that. So. And then we had a question about button reprogramming earlier. We'll cover two things real quick. Like if you're wearing super thick lobster gloves in the winter, you can set both of these buttons up to shift into an easier gear, both these buttons to shift into a harder gear, run it synchronized so your front shifting happens automatically and you don't have to distinguish between the big and the small. Also, we no longer have an A junction because it's in the rear derailleur. So if you needed to make a barrel adjustment while you're on the bike and you don't want to get off the bike, and press and hold the rear derailleur to get you into adjustment mode. If you have Ultegra or Dura Ace, you can just reprogram one of these top buttons to be your new A junction button. So you just hold that down, your shifter turns into a barrel adjuster. You make that adjustment quickly, hold it back down, you're out of adjustment mode. Um, and I, I can't think Wait. of one. I was just about to say, all that stuff you can do at the red light yep. while you're waiting. Yep. So I actually, one of my best, Yep. Yep. Front take care of itself. Yep. yep. Uh, I, one of my best friends was a bomb tech. He was a Navy SEAL and bomb tech, and he blew off uh, most of the fingers on his right hand and has no left hand. Uh, so for years, uh, buttons are just buttons in the Shimano world. Uh, they're switches, just like at your house. You got one for your burner, you got one for your lamp or whatever. So you can program those. So we have the right shifter, uh, the two bottom buttons work for uh, this finger and stub uh, for him to shift the uh, rear derailleur. And then we put the hood top button. One hood top button is a front shift up. And then we put a sprinter button on the, glued it on the inside of the lever so we could shift it uh, front derailleur down. So he has all that done right there. He still likes mechanical or manual shifting, not synchro shifting, because that's just how he is. So we've been able to do that for 10 years or so, because that's, again, technology, customizable buttons we've had for years. In fact, before the other guys had left and right, up, down, we were actually able to do that too, which is pretty cool. Did you set them up with uh, uh, one brake lever for both calipers? Yep. And out of curiosity, how, did you, how, how was the balance portion? Yep. <laughs> well, front brake has to be stronger uh, since the hose is Again, shorter. this is completely aside, but what we ended up doing was, uh, Home brewing a way where he puts this, this is again it's specific to him. He has yeah. a stub he puts on his left, yeah. uh, and then he holds on with his th like this, and then he actually has his levers pointed to the sky. We have a bar that we put behind it, so we took front and rear brake levers, uh, tandem the master cylinder to a bar to a bar. So he actually uses his butt to slow down, 
and he'll rip by you doing a bazillion miles an hour. Um, partially because he can't stop, and also because uh, he's a he's a demon on a bike and a lunatic. Like, yeah. I mean, he's a bomb tech, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. I know we kind of went through it a bit, but line them up. Free stuff. That's why y'all are here. Yeah.